<laughs> That's about as American as it gets, bro. It's America. Is this thing on? Check one, two, one, two. And it's fucking crazy. There's invincible, indestructible, and he's living for like 10,000 years. Five, four, three. Welcome to the Hunt for Greatness podcast, everybody. I got Sierra Coomer on tonight. Coomer is how you say it, right? Yes, Coomer. Sierra Coomer. You want to keep that thing real close to your mouth. Okay. If you need to, you can move it. You can actually move this whole table towards you if you want. It's okay. I can hold it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so let me fix my shit, too. Yeah, so what got me interested in having you on, uh, anybody who's listening, um, I saw... On Instagram, I saw you were doing like a. Um, you can actually unplug this right here. Hold it real Thanks. tight. There you go. Is that better? Really good. Thanks. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Cool. Um, I saw on Instagram that you were doing like an anti. Is, okay, I think it said anti fracking rally, and just correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Offshore drilling, fracking, all that. Okay. Oil exploration. Okay, so that's encompassing everything is what, like what you just said is like encompassing everything. Yeah, they're similar enough. Yeah. Can you hear everything good in yours? Oh, yeah. Cool. Perfect. All right. Thanks. I'm not too loud. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) I got to fix this shit. All right, cool. Um, So offshore drilling is, so what's the difference between that and fracking? Like, because I have no clue. Uh, Fracking, you'll see that a lot um, inland middle of the united states what they'll do in texas they'll um pump water this fluid into the rocks and ground to break it up frack it um then to uh, drill oil after that um offshore drilling there they will have uh first they'll conduct seismic testing and they'll send out um pockets of air through the water and then they'll conduct offshore drilling after that if they find oil it's a big uh platform uh, a lot of work, um, day-to-day operation. So, did you ever see the movie Mile 22? I did Isn't not. Isn't it called Mile 22 with Mark Wahlberg where they blew up the fucking, uh, the thing, the, it's about the BP oil spill, basically. I know, I haven't seen that movie, but I definitely uh, know about the BP oil so spill. So, the BP oil spill, that was like offshore drilling, correct? Yes, yeah. So, they, what, so they were kind of like ignoring um like basically like rules and regulations that were put in place in order for that not to happen from what i understand and it caused this crazy like environmental disaster i think they might still be cleaning that shit up they are and that's why for these events that i was helping uh, organize it spills happen because you never know uh, when that might occur but i think the bigger issue is the day-to-day um, they're going to build and dice up on uh, marshes and wetlands which is great for our fisheries dog hunting dog duck uh, hunting yeah, to bring hunt. your dog yeah. on yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 that's where a lot of ducks hang out exactly. like if yeah, you destroy fowl. yeah if you destroy the marshlands like you're taking the ducks out which pisses like i don't like that for sure because i was telling you before the podcast like I support fossil fuels just because there's, in my opinion, there's no alternative energy that can really compete with it. But maybe you know something else that I don't. Because, I mean, you know, you got solar, you got wind. But are they re- can they really compete with fossil fuels, like, at this point? I think there's not one solution. You have to use it all. Yeah. And um, so I have heard from environmental nonprofits which you of this is their business but how wind is really picking up the wind industry they're installing a lot of turbines in farmlands yeah Um, this is like a record low turnout for farmers and uh it's a shaky business but this is a way for farmers to make more income yeah uh, to do that solar and then gradually reduce oil and gas intake uh would be an alternative avenue yeah, so using more, 
ways to get the energy and cutting down on the fossil fuels is the goal or is it eventually to eliminate fossil fuels i mean um, eventually to eliminate but right. the first step we're not at um we're not technologically advanced enough to right. just quit cold turkey you think we will be one day I do, yeah. We need a lot of um, batteries for solar panels because obviously when the sun sets and goes down, we have to have capacity to hold that energy. Right. So, you know, like Tesla is doing his thing. The technology is always improving. Yeah. Yeah. So, creating these batteries kind of fucks up the environment too, right? Or is there nowhere to throw them away? Or I've just heard things about Tesla's batteries kind of causing like bad things that happen in the environment and i don't know the scientific terms and shit but like i've just heard that you know sometimes making these batteries can hurt the environment too is it is it almost inevitable like to not hurt the environment when we're creating man-made shit like does that make sense yeah definitely i think there's always a risk factor and you just have to weigh the risks versus the reward yeah uh for each um for each incident. Yeah. Yeah, because it's kind of like discouraging a little bit. Do you ever get discouraged whenever you're doing these things? Like, um, I do, but I'm not so attached to the issue. I'm more um, here to just talk to folks and to um, have discourse and conversation. Yeah. About yeah. It. So That's it, why I'm yeah. thankful that you were willing to, to do it. Have you ever done... So you've never done a podcast? I haven't. Cool. Yeah. Well, welcome so to your here. first podcast. Thank I'm you. sure you'll do more if you're doing these rallies because people want to talk about this type of shit because like i mean how many people do you know that really don't care about the earth a lot too many really that don't <laughs> care about the earth like well more, maybe don't care but apathetic yeah so that's taking don't care too or you know well it's kind of like smoking cigarettes like you can smoke cigarettes for a long time before you get cancer but it's like you smoke a cigarette and you're like well it's not gonna give me cancer right now so i'll smoke another one and then you end up with cancer and you're fucked basically so it's like it's hard it's I, th- I feel like it's harder to care about something that doesn't have like extreme adverse effects that happen right then you know what i mean like it takes a long time yeah it's just kind of it's a it's definitely like a it's such an important issue though because we have like a uh like you were just saying like our marshlands that's our ecosystem see i'm a duck hunter so like i care about the ducks like i know that sounds crazy because i kill them but, like, I want there to be a lot of ducks. Like, I want to be able to teach my kid how to hunt if he's, you know, if he's interested in that. But, like, if there's no marshlands, that kills a lot. I mean, that takes the ducks totally out of the equation. I mean. Yeah, and uh, seismic testing, I briefly brought that up, where they're sending yeah. air pockets um, into the water. And what that does is harm the area where dolphins and whales um, forage and get their food. And so then they have to go elsewhere, and um, that'll eventually lead to decline of um, those species. And we have a lot of endangered whales here, the right whale specifically. Um, so it's definitely a conservation uh, component to offshore drilling as well. Damn. Damn, because, like, whales and dolphins, they they kind of, like, communicate like people almost. That's fucked up. They're like the monkeys of the sea, dude. Yeah, like they can experience pain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like many animals do they have sex for fun exactly yeah (laughs) i mean what what does that tell you yeah not uh, a primitive yeah 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 thing for them that's crazy man because i love to fish too so like it sucks that we're doing all these things that are killing these animals that i mean i know you probably don't hunt or fit you fish do you ever fish i uh, sometimes do never do too much though yeah i mean it's just uh such a big issue dude what got you into it like what got you into the anti-fracking thing what got you uh, interested in it it was a long story but through uh, tell me the school. whole story i want to know the <laughs> whole story well i uh, went to uncw okay. and i studied environmental sciences and okay. um, so i was involved with the environmental community a lot of nonprofit work volunteering and um and then i started doing contract work with nonprofits and it all had an emphasis on of course like conservation and uh it kind of snowballed into offshore drilling and so i was really happy to work with a great nonprofit and so our mission is to protect our ocean waves and beaches and um, i'm working in communities in north carolina to educate and engage that's awesome so it's called great nonprofit 
a great nonprofit. I, I'm not working, so I can't really say what it is. But a yeah, great nonprofit. It's a okay. great one. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Great, I got yeah, you. Not the title. <laughs> um, what's, uh, tell me your Instagram name. Do you know it? Uh, I think it's Sierra Coom. Yeah. C O O M. I think that is it. Yeah. yeah. In case anybody wants to follow Sierra on Instagram, uh, Sierra at Sierra Coom. That way they can kind of follow your journey and what you're doing. So the other day when you posted that, I think I'm trying to remember you had a mic in your hand. I think. Yes. Were you yeah. doing like a speech or what? What were you doing? I was just introducing folks. Um, our panel, it wasn't a panel, but we had guest speakers. One was the mayor of Beaufort. Oh, I was wow. in Beaufort. Okay. Um, and he is an um, incredible, intelligent guy. He has the doctors at Duke and is involved in marine science research. So he's opposed to it, and that was pretty cool to see. And then the president of BayPAC, it's called the Business Alliance for Protecting the Atlantic Coast, and he's the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, wow. So we're really um, gathering elected officials to voice their opinion um, in opposition. So that was the main purpose. Yeah. So it's important to reach those people because they're the ones that are, like, influencing so many others, you know? Right, yeah. And they're passing resolutions or signing on to them all up and down uh, the coast. There's a lot of uh, support to protect the coast. Yeah, so... You, so you guys have like some pretty like important people that are on board with this obviously definitely yeah yeah so are most does it matter like if they're a republican or a democrat usually or is it pretty much like most people are pretty much on board with it as far as or are most people not on board with it like as far as political type deal um it depends like florida and south carolina has pretty good support from both sides Republicans okay. and sen- senators. Um, currently, our senators we have Tillis Burr is a rep- Tillis Burr and Rouser for Wilmington. They're all Republicans, and they are not very strong on the topic. But overall, they are for uh, oil drilling. So they're for fracking, right? What? I-, I just wonder why. Like, what fucking benefit do they get from that? You know, like is somebody paying them, or because. You would think, like, you live... Do they live in Wilmington, or they just represent Wilmington, or you don't really know? Um, they're from Wilmington, Rouser is, but he's up in D.C. Uh, I think he is from Wilmington, though. Yeah. I mean, you would think, like, people from the coast would want to conserve the nature and wildlife and all the things that make it beautiful, you know what I mean? You going to bed, buddy? Definitely. All right, give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Quit staring at her. Give me a kiss. My night. Maddox. My son's in here. Anybody listen to this? I don't know what he's doing. Trying to give me hugs. Stepping over wires trying to give me hugs. He always wants to give me hugs and kisses every night before he goes to bed. He's so Thank sweet. You. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just wonder because like, I just, I'm trying to figure out who I support and what I support politically. Like, it's such a weird... How old are you? 26. 26. All right, I'm 29. So, And I've probably known you for, what, like 10 years, probably? Yeah. I think I'm... Because I was probably... No, I've probably known you for, like, 12 years, probably. Maybe. Long time. I can't keep track anymore. Yeah. Now that everyone's getting old. Yeah, so you've been in Wilmington for three years. Yeah, yeah. And you moved... So you moved from Chapel Hill to Wilmington. Yep. Yeah. And you went to UNCW once you moved from Chapel Hill. I did, yeah. And you studied the environmental... Sciences. Sciences. What is that about? Environmental sciences? Is it just all-encompassing as far as... is it? Um, obviously, you probably loved it, right? Yeah, I'm really glad I chose that. And I actually decided to study environmental sciences because when I was living in Chapel Hill, I read about the potential for Duke Energy to dump their coal ash in the old brickyard in Sanford. Yeah. Um, they got a liner there. It's not like the worst thing in the world, but I was really um, fired up about it because it was next to a underserved community, and I thought it was an, an injustice um, to folks who don't have the means to say no or like not in my backyard. Yeah. Um, so that's really what got me into it all. And so, um, but once I started studying environmental sciences, what it is, it's a um, like a social science, I guess. It's not too hard into biology, chemistry, or any of that, but we more talk about how we can um, change policy and communicate issues to the public. Yeah. So it's good. So that does have stuff to do with politics, basically. Um, it can if 
you choose to go down that road um but that's more like what i wanted to do with it yeah yeah so my like i'm getting i'm starting to kind of this is just where i'm at personally with it like i'm starting to kind of lose faith in politicians altogether. like everybody i think that i like it's like damn like you're an idiot you know what i mean like I would say I'm probably more right to the right, like, as far as, like, Republican or conservative, like, fiscally, maybe, and, like, socially liberal, almost. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't give a fuck what you, who you marry, or, like, if you get an abortion, I don't give a fuck, you know what I mean? But, like, as far as giving away free shit to people, I feel like it just handicaps them, almost. Like, I feel like me going out and having to do something, like, if I'm physically able to do it, like, it makes me a better person, like, to be a productive member of society almost. But, like, I mean, you knew me 12, like, however, 10, 12 years ago. I was a fuck-up piece of shit, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't do anything positive to affect people's lives. I think that's so cool that you're out there, like, doing something that's, that's like a nonprofit. You take time out of your day to go out and do something that could uh, potentially make, like, a huge difference in the world, man. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's why this work isn't like depressing for me because yeah. uh, I focus on that exactly. Yeah, so you don't get really discouraged too easily, do you? I don't know. And uh, North Carolina, we're in our own like little bubble, but there's so much good work going on in the United States as a whole and around the world. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so I'm like real into where shit's going to go in the future. Like as far as so do you so you think wind is going to play a huge part in it like as far as sustainable energy like we'll have wind turbines everywhere and they'll just be kind of power because because they power i mean now they power a good amount of shit like they're not as like shitty as they used to be you know what i mean yeah and it would be really cool to see wind turbines offshore because that's where the wind is why don't they have them there and there's a lot of moratoriums what is um, that set in place it's like a uh, no for now no for five years um so Why? all that legislatures uh, enact in the water times. yeah yeah in the water i don't understand so we're fighting that i don't know where we're at um in that battle but i think rhode islands in the last three years have been implementing wind and it's worked really well for them like on, offshore oh offshore. offshore yeah oh shit yeah that's crazy they're the smallest state in the nation too i believe rhode island's the smallest one right i think so yeah damn that's crazy i wonder how they got to be so we, why are that's crazy we're not doing that all the fucking water out there and we're not i mean it just doesn't make sense like what the fuck are these people doing i you know, know what i mean definitely i know at like bald head islands here we wanted to put wind turbines out there and they didn't want to look at the wind turbines so they're like no we're not gonna let that happen so it was an aesthetic reason so, so put them offshore <laughs> so put them offshore where yeah. you can't see them and then plus if you're because like a wind turbine it'll have to go all the way into the ground right mm-hmm. so then fish are going to be hanging out around that thing so it's going to be a good fishing spot too you can go check yeah. it out i promise you for sure it's going to be a definitely a good fishing spot so that's crazy that i never even thought about that putting them in the water yeah. that's crazy dude like you know what's really like what makes me just cringe is the amount of pollution that like china and countries like that put in the fucking ocean have you seen that like the pacific garbage uh what's it called yeah those um gyres or gyres yeah they're like big huge like there's a um they say there's a pile of plastic that's the size of texas out in the pacific yeah like, i've heard a that island basically dude and i don't that don't come from us i don't think do you think I definitely think it comes from everyone yeah. around the world. Um, unfortunately, like recycling just isn't where it needs to be. A, yeah. lot, a lot of towns don't, small communities don't do it. Even in Beaufort, there's not a recycling center. Beaufort, where is that at? I'm trying um, to think where that's at. It's by Bogue Banks uh, up north along the coast. So like Newburn, past Newburn and shit? I think Cape so. Carteret? Carteret County. Yeah, Carteret County. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Damn, that's crazy, man. They need to get with it with that wind turbines in the ocean shit. For sure. And you don't have to look at it. And you can even build like artificial coast, uh, coral reefs um, on the turbine underwater, or there's so many opportunities. Like for fish or like to... Fish and for, yeah, it provides habitat for fish. Yeah, but, okay. Yeah, and then we're even like looking, there's so many things you can do, but um, potentially like oyster farming. 
they're doing that so that's a cool lot of alternatives you know what's crazy dude is like an oyster filters like one oyster filter is like 100 gallons an hour or some crazy shit like 100 gallons of water it, it filters through that oyster so the more oysters we got the more cleaner our water is isn't that crazy it is yeah. and they're delicious do you like oysters they're all right i'm not a huge fan <laughs> there's better seafood out there but yeah. they're good yeah, dude, we love eating oysters, and football season rolls around, we just sit out there and eat oysters all the time, dude. It's oh, yeah. so good. good too. Yeah. Terrible. So, yeah, I mean, I fully agree with... See, I'm so glad you came on to talk about it, because I'm thinking about how important gas and, like, fossil fuel is, which, I mean, fossil fuel essentially brought the world out of poverty, almost. Like, it gave people electricity and running water that otherwise wouldn't have had it, which is great, you know what I mean? But... Mm-hmm. I think we're smart enough now where we should be figuring out something, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, well, there will come a time long after we're gone uh, when we run out of gas. So, And we're going to have to have solutions, so why not work on those Hopefully bef- right now? Hopefully way before that ever happens, we're in a solution, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we have a while. we got good reserves, but the U.S. is also um, energy independent, so we take a lot of gas from up north like near canada the tar heel uh sands a lot of gas and that's where fracking happens uh so we don't import that much oil and gas that's what i was going to ask you because it's kind of like uh because we go to war over oil and oil fields and shit and we go over to other people's countries and we take their shit and and we just debo them out of like all their natural resources and whatnot because we're the most uh I mean, we have the biggest military in the world, you know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, it's almost like getting the gas and the oil here is almost like the lesser of two evils, but it's kind of hard to look at it like that because we're fucking up the environment at the same time, you know what I mean? Yeah, and there's always um, good practice and better practice and then just like crap. Yeah. So advocating, I think, uh, for the lesser of two evils is always a good direction to go. You think so? Uh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Which, but that sometimes entails regulations, and that's like a really touchy word that no one really wants to hear. Yeah, especially like government regulations. Yeah, I don't. That's the last thing I want to fucking hear. But sometimes you got to look past. We we got a lot I like of the word reform. Reform sounds a little bit better. Yeah, I like that too. Sometimes you got to look past what we're actually calling shit. You know what I mean? Because like pro life or. Um, pro-choice or like because the names are kind of misleading sometimes you know what i mean like what we're calling stuff they are yeah and they're persuasive which is the last thing you want is just the name itself to be persuasive yeah yeah like i want to know the facts you know what i'm saying i want to know the science i want to know the facts and like so you obviously and there's still people that deny or don't believe in climate change as far as that goes but like and i haven't done enough research to really know but like how are people still denying climate change? Like, I don't understand. Or, like, because we used to call it global warming. Right. And now we call it climate change. It's the same shit, right? Um, they are different. Uh, I'm trying to think of what the def- textbook definitions are. But they're similar, though. Yeah. 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 Same uh, effects, yeah. basically. It's just hard to tell because we're only alive for, like, 80 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, a human's only alive for, like, 80 years, so it's hard for them to realize the effect that we have on the environment you know what i mean yeah for sure and i think we're so complacent and like to a certain extent like egocentric so we're not thinking 200 years from now um because me and you we're going to be pretty fine for the rest of our lives yeah. but like ex- expecting someone to think about like three generations down the road is not really tangible and like hard to, to uh connect sometimes yeah and you don't have kids right no yeah so like it's easier for me to think about down the road when i have a kid Mm -hmm, and i don't want him to be in an environment where he can't catch a fish or can't shoot a duck or or do things that i've found a lot of joy in you know what i mean it's like if they're not around if we don't take because there's regulations on fishing like or duck hunting like you can't shoot but like two mallards or something like that you know what i mean or you can't keep but one red drum or red fish so like they've put these regulations in place so the fish and the birds can repopulate and it'll keep like a like a good circle going where they're getting larger and larger and like i i got the utmost respect for that type of stuff because it's like like if a fish has to be a certain size if it's not or if it's close throw it back like let it get bigger let it breed 
You know what I mean? Like little shit like that can make a difference too. It does. And then everyone gets to enjoy it. Yeah. We're not hunting because there's nothing to hunt. Everyone yeah. gets to hunt, but just do it um, best practice. Use best practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow the fucking rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, I just think, I think what you're doing is so, it's so important and it's awesome. And uh, I respect that a lot. Yeah, I respect that a lot because you, I mean, we we probably had I probably hadn't seen you in what like five years or something long time probably yeah so what are you doing down at the comedy club bartender I am serving so I'm no longer there but I loved it and yeah I, I might go back Amy's I like cool so as much. fuck I love Amy yeah. yeah it's one of the best I've worked at a lot of restaurants in college and before after it's one of the best uh, like clubs restaurants i've ever worked at really yeah for sure it's such a cool little venue yeah I it's love so it. cool i'm still trying to figure out how to do comedy like i mean i do all right but there's so much room for improvement mm -hmm. and like trying to figure out who i am have you so i guess you've seen like like open mics and have you seen all that stuff like an open mic or you only go for like the main uh yeah i, I have been open mic but like attending outside of work but uh, i just worked on friday saturday so they were bringing in big acts from brooklyn New yeah. York city california all this um, yeah so cool yeah it was fun i'm kind of ups jealous that i can't like listen to hilarious comics for free now yeah that's awesome <laughs> and that, make money. yeah that's so cool that they bring in people like that so you you've kind of heard more like when people have their shit together because open mics are like a shit show sometimes, you know what I mean? It's like everybody's trying to work out what they think is funny mm -hmm. and figure out a way to deliver it and figure out how to make you laugh with it because it's like it could be funny to me, but if I'm not delivering it right to you, it's not going to work. It gets lost in translation. Yeah. We get a lot of the um, the folks who have mastered their comic uh, comedy during open mic they'll open for the Friday Saturday shows. Yeah, that's cool. They've been there for years and it's a really close click. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to get into that. Like, I'm, uh, I've just been writing a lot. I think if I write, I come up with just crazy, stupid shit, and I can kind of build off of it and make bits out of it. And yeah, I'm trying to, um, trying to figure it out. It's kind of, it's like, it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever done as far as like get a mic and like, all right, make us laugh. You know what I mean? I can imagine. I haven't been up there myself, but yeah. It's yeah. A room full of dark darkness. Yeah, dude. And, like, the lights are on. You can't really see anything. And it's like, I don't know, dude. Like, I've done some hard shit in my life. But, like, that shit's hard. Like, it's, like, such a mind fuck. Like, I might think something so funny and then get up there. And, I mean, people laugh, but it's not. Like, in my head, I'm like, that was funny. What the fuck's wrong with y'all? Well, sometimes you get a sour crowd. And, like, even comics will be like, wow, like, this audience sucks tonight. I like that'll happen. Yeah, I try not to do that though because it's like, how am I going to get better by blaming them? You know what That's I'm saying? That's true. It's a bad attitude. I'm super critical of myself though, like in the first place. Like I try to be like the absolute best I can possibly be, you know? And if I don't perform to that caliber that I'm thinking I should be at, like I'll just beat myself up kind of, but not really, but you know, beat myself up to a certain extent, but like be critical and like, what can I do better? You know what I mean? Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. It's just such a crazy... How'd you get in down there and, and doing that? I was at Wrightsville Beach Brewery, and I served her there. She came over from Dead Crow Comedy, and I was like, hey, if you're ever hiring, let me know, because I want to work there. And so one day, she was like, we're hiring, and you should talk to Amy. That's all that happened, word of mouth. I saw you doing taking... You took something down there on their stage about fracking, mm -hmm. right? What yeah. was that, to raise awareness? It was, so we have this big flag, and it's blue and white. It's uh, really cool, kind of looks like waves. And we're taking it to businesses in Wilmington um, and asking businesses to sign on to this letter to oppose offshore drilling. And so Dead Crow, um, they were happy to, Amy did. And um, we had, like, 20 other businesses downtown who all really um, wanted to defend the coast. Yeah. So it was like a petition? It was. It's a business sign-on letter, and so it was calling on elected officials to oppose offshore drilling. And then there's over. It's you. You over the U.S. We have over 400 signatures, and we're going to present it to Congress. Oh shit. Um. Yeah. So. Damn. And we have this big uh, surfboard, and we ask businesses to sign on to the surfboard to also present on Capitol Hill. Um. So there's a lot of 
um, some lobbying with all nonprofits. Uh, that's usually the main goal is to uh, influence policy. Policy. Yeah. Damn, that's cool. Y'all are doing that. When? How long until you take it and present it to Congress? Uh, they do it every year. I think like the beginning of the year. So you're go? Are you going? Um, if I'm still with the organization. Yeah. I do a lot of contract work, so it's like four months at a time. So constantly on to the next yeah so what does that mean explain that to me because i don't know what that means contract work what do you mean yeah uh, non-profits a lot of time they don't have a ton of money in the bank uh, for extra employees so they'll write grants and they'll receive a some lump of money and then that buys uh an employee for three months and so um, they'll usually have a specific project that they want them to do to accomplish during that grant time and then um so that's the contract you're on for three months what type of thing would they just give me an example like as far as what type of thing they would want you to accomplish like is that like going out and taking pictures with the flag and getting signatures yeah, and like things of that fun. nature <laughs> yeah so it's like not really like nothing too crazy but it's like mm-hmm. this is how you can help us accomplish our goal basically yeah a lot of events planning uh for example during the midterm elections um this past november I was working with a group to turn out the vote for midterm elections. So I would really rally people to go to the polls, pass out literature, knock on doors, make phone calls, uh, get folks ready to go vote. And that was like a three-month gig. That's cool. It's really fun. Yeah. And uh, so basically you're trying to get people to vote for a person who is not for fracking. Is that? Yes. Yeah. But does so, that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Voting for people uh, who align with our environmental goals. So it doesn't matter uh, what party affiliation you are. I think if a lot of people thought like that more, it would be a lot better. Yeah, no party lines. um, It would be cool if it was like really like that. But that's what nonprofits like by the law, by the rule, you got to do that. Isn't that logical though? Yeah, for sure. Like, isn't it logical to vote for somebody who best aligns with your beliefs and morals? For sure. And not vote based on Democrat, Republican, Independent, Libertarian, Democratic, Socialist, whatever. Yeah, it's really decisive, unfortunately. What if, more so. what if nobody had a party name? Like, what if it was like you had to just figure out? You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't know if it was a Democrat or Republican, but you knew you liked uh, Tulsi Gabbard or whatever. You know what I mean? I really like Tulsi Gabbard, oh, no. e- even though that I'm like... I'm, not really a democrat but see this that type of thinking though it's like i'm not gonna let me not really being a democrat influence me in who i vote for you know what i'm saying she i think she's a senator hawaii oh yeah but yeah she's running for president yeah cool i need to check her out yeah i'm pretty sure she's probably environmentally conscious because she lives in hawaii and a lot of the hawaiians are like that's their religion like their spirit is like Mm -hmm nature you know what i'm saying they they highly revere nature you know yeah it's a beautiful uh place i've heard also i work for the senator peterson so i get to hear a lot of um his environmental policies and just kind of how like politics works in general and it's a really rough game no shit so you don't think you'll ever really get deep into the politics or do you think you will i don't think so i would prefer i like I, I think lobbying would be fun yeah but it's so hard on politicians and now the at least like the minimum requirement is to be a lawyer or you know to be super wealthy which is just not fair to the people but yeah really damn. high standards damn why is that why do they have like to you're saying to be a lawyer or be uh you, you mean to be a congressman like as far as that you need that prerequisite to be like wealthy went to harvard yale whatever yeah not not maybe like if you're a president at harvard or yale but uh, many congressmen are lawyers uh, it takes so much money to run a campaign um and so it kind of limits the pool to those who can afford it and obviously those what well, lawyer Super you know attorney rich. is a good uh profession yeah yeah and they study the law so it's kind of apt yeah so i mean kind of makes sense but also, it's kind of like you got to think about how are you representing me and 99% of the other people that are middle class or lower class that 
struggled at some point in their life and like didn't have parents to just pay for all their shit you know what i mean like how how can you relate to which i can't even relate to somebody who lives in the projects or has lived on the streets you know what i mean like it, we're so far removed from those people like i feel like they're almost not even human sometimes it is distance um and, and some they understand that like maybe it's not a reality you've ever lived but you can still express empathy and yeah. re- um, try to relate to people who weren't as as fortunate as you yeah so you work for a senator yeah mm-hmm. damn NC that's senator. crazy yeah. north carolina senator how'd you yeah. get that gig um so i just get really lucky a lot (laughs) (laughs) and i was doing this contract job i've been talking about and um we had a thank you party and he was at the party the thank you party and he said he was looking for a legislative aid i didn't get that job but they were like but you can um be fundraiser coordinator and like coordinate parties for us to raise money i was like okay so that's what i've been doing Damn, how fun. long you been doing that? Since January. No shit. Yeah. Damn, that's cool. You are lucky. <laughs> yeah, you're how you got the job at Dead Crow and shit. You're in the right place at the right time a lot. That's, yeah, that's how that's it works. That's cool. But you're like a real chill, like laid back person. So like, I mean, you're not like in your face intimidating and mm-hmm. people probably feel pretty comfortable talking to you for the most part, right? Yeah, I try not to be... Um, you know, just be normal. Yeah. Actor, act like yourself. Well, you're definitely not normal, but we'll. <laughs> Your best normal. <laughs> yeah, you're. You, I think that's definitely probably got something to do with it. Like, as far as like, yeah, you're probably a little bit lucky, but you're like an easy person to talk. You always been like a real chill, like easy person to talk to. Don't get worked up about shit. And I think a level headed, like even killed person is good for what you do because I would get worked up, and fucking cuss people out probably. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's so much, like, hate in the world. Like, I guess when my younger self probably would have gotten worked up. I mean, you were pretty time. chill back then. Yeah, yeah. You've always been like that. Like, pretty laid back. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's perfect what you're doing. It's just cool that you <coughs> you went to college for what you went to college for, and then you end up working for a senator. And, like, you've got to experience all these cool things, like, already, and you're 26. You say you're 26, right? Yeah, 26. That's awesome, dude. Where do you think you're headed? Like, where do you see yourself? What are, you, what are your goals? Like, where do you want to be? Do you know, or are you just kind of, like, going, flowing, and taking it as it comes? I was doing that, but then my boyfriend just bought a house, so that kind of grounds me to Wilmington. Um, I really went to work for nonprofits. Yeah. So, that would be cool. Um I am interested in maybe like being a business owner 30 years from now, you know, just kind of doing my own thing. That's awesome. I couldn't imagine a nine to five, like in the office. Yeah. It's not my style. Okay. So I got a nine to five, but it's like, basically I fix furniture, anything a delivery guy can mess up. Like I'll fix people's walls and leather repairs and microfiber repairs, frame repairs, like any kind of furniture shit. Like I can pretty much fix it. Like wood repairs, things like that. But like, I don't have somebody over my shoulder all day. I kind of make my own schedule and, like, take a lunch when I want and, like, nobody really messes with me too much. So it makes my job, like, the shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's real chill, real laid back. I'm by myself all day, but other than that, like, it's pretty... Like, I get to talk to different people. Some people get on my last nerve, but most of them are, like, super cool and I can get to know people. Like, I like like talking to people. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? know. Yeah, (laughs) I like talking to people. I like to get to know you and, like, what's your outlook on stuff and like i was talking to a uh had to be vietnam vet i'm thinking what war he was saying he was in but he was like probably 80 and you could tell like his vision was kind of going because he was looking at me but kind of and it was cool to hear his viewpoint because i was they were sitting there and their son was trying to teach him how to use facebook on an ipad that's funny yeah and i was like did you ever think you were going to be communicating with people like this and he's like ah i never thought i'd be doing this just to hear i was like what do you think we're gonna be doing when i get old and he was like and i was just telling him i think the technology is gonna be in us like somehow that's in so a- scary you've been watching black mirror oh <laughs> shit i love black mirror dude i love that it have you, opener, have you seen them all I've seen them all and then there's another one like on amazon that was similar 
and I watched all those. Dude, too, like what's that? AI in the future. I wish I could remember it. Dude, you gotta um, tell me yeah. when you remember it. I will. It's on Amazon. Is it as good as Black Mirror though? Um, I think the producer is like an author who writes books like that. So yeah. it is a little more like in detail and depth. Like more the of a Amazon serious tone. One. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, it was crazy. It, I've seen. I watched it like a year or two ago, but. Damn, I gotta know what that is. Check it out, yeah. I'm super interested in stuff like that. Like, where's technology going? Because I was thinking the other day, like, what's it gonna take for me to? Because like, new iPhone comes out or something, and I'm like, hell yeah, I gotta go get it. I gotta go get it. But like, what happens when that chip comes out, and they're gonna put it in the back of your neck, and like, that's how you and you can just like think something, and you can see like screens pop up, and you're like texting people with your mind and shit. You know what I mean? Am I going to jump on that bandwagon, too? That's scary to think about. You never know. I was super pissed when they made me put the chip on my debit card like six years ago. Yeah. I thought that was so weird. I waited until weird. the very last minute. I was like, I, and then now it's just second nature and the same thing with ATM machine or ATMs. Yeah. Um, they said ATMs would take bank teller jobs at the bank, but as we can see, that never happened. Yeah, but, but you can deposit cash in them now. Yeah, they still suck at it accepting the cash though. i don't do As it a server, i don't trust I know them. the one dollars the, the dollar they spend them right back out yeah it's i don't not efficient yeah i don't trust them i don't put no money in them yeah. fucking things dude i always talk to a bank teller face to face and like and i check behind them in my account when i deposit something i'm like all right i'm gonna double check you because you're a human and there's human error you know what i mean for sure but like yeah. it is crazy to think about like as far as technology if we can figure out how to do that we should be able to figure out how to use other alternate energy you know what i'm saying yeah yeah technology is always advancing and it makes me think what's already out there that's just not like public knowledge or hasn't been uh, like ex- shit that the military's got yeah patented or any of that yeah yeah military is really robust they gotta always have shit something. yeah dude they gotta have shit that we don't know about you remember that episode of black mirror with the robot dogs it was like facial recognition dogs that like chased this lady up into a tree and she had to wait until the battery died to get away from it. I think it was called Heavy Metal. It was a crazy it's episode. A so she, the dogs like chase this lady and she climbs up into a tree. The dog recognizes her face and she's like a highly sought after like uh, not criminal but like a somebody who snitched on the government like a whistleblower or something mm-hmm. that they wanted dead so they yes yeah, they sent these little robot dogs after and they're like little robot pit bulls basically and they'll just rip you to pieces and she like climbs up in this tree and she's waiting for the battery to die like she can see the battery starting to die on the robot dog and the robot dog finally just you see his head just go down and she's like all right she timed it to where she could get down out of the tree and get away while the dog was like resting to recharge it recharged it fuck and recharged itself so like she's running from the dog and like the dogs there's like a few of them and they find her like they're pinging off her cell phone and they're like facial recognition software and satellites and they find her and they kill her in the end i think but like it's just crazy to think about like drones and shit yeah yeah and amazon is now or whole foods someone they're using drones for like grocery shopping are they thinking about it like it's yeah they're doing all this drone stuff um i try not to be scared of technology but it's really easy to get scared yeah it's hard not to be scared because it's like i mean it dude if we would have told that vietnam vet 60 years ago like hey dude there's gonna be something as big as a damn what could we compare this to like as big as a notebook and you're gonna be able to hold it in your hand and it's gonna have the technology of like NASA because at that point in time like this phone has more computing capability than NASA did back then yeah like to tell that old man that he would probably be like what I heard that Apple they had camera features like on your glasses but they had to discontinue it or didn't go through the planning process because obviously like that's weird we don't want strangers taking pictures of us with like with their glasses yeah like Google Glass yeah Oh, yeah. is this a thing right now? Or? Google Glass, they, they came out with glasses that you, but they look kind of weird, so you know somebody's, no, right. yeah, you know so they you got get those, like, peeping toms, that's not going to be Weird, good. dude. Yeah. Like, they could just hit a button on the side and just record, like, talking to you, and sh- or just seeing you. Like, somebody, like, stalking you, and they can record everything. Dude, that is fucking weird. No safe zone. Yeah, dude, that's crazy, dude. So, but yeah, like, I think that it's, 
it just scares me how quickly I buy into these cell phones and I'm like, yeah, I got to have that one. I got to have the X or I got to, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I just think I better be careful what, where we go from here. You know what I mean? Cause like somebody's going to come out with some shit and it's going to have a little apple on it and it's going to be, a, it's, did you see like everybody turning their faces into old people? Yeah, on that social media. I did didn't you, do it. Did you? I didn't do it either. Somebody know. did it on their phone of me, and the, like oh, really? he was doing it to him, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" And he turned it, and it turned me into like an old person, and I'm like, "Oh shit!" But then I went to go download the app, right? I went to go download the app, and the terms and conditions came up, and Your I started. Credit card number. Well, I start. No, they didn't even need that. I started looking at it, and I was like, "Wait, so it wants access to all my pictures mm-hmm. and all my videos." to for what and like i started looking at it and i'm like holy shit dude like this thing wants the rights to every picture i use and i'm like i ain't downloading that shit yeah snapchat too snapchat does it too do you have snapchat yeah i got snapchat whenever you like install it it makes you ask you know it has to get you confirmation for everything yeah i i let go of snapchat but did you yeah fuck dude it's gonna be something like that and we're gonna make a huge mistake and everybody's like they're gonna make clones of us because they scanned our face faces on the on snapchat right they have it all in the archives dude and they're just gonna kill us off and replace us with our clones and nobody's gonna know and they're gonna be like these things that obey this one supreme being sitting like wizard of Oz shit like some dude yeah, sitting in the computer room picture. But then the world ends and our clones are still thriving because we're robots. Holy shit. <laughs> that's dude. one way to look at it. <laughs> dude, that's crazy to think about. Like if we turn into robots or or like even if, I know this is kind of crazy. I'm talking about crazy shit, but I feel like that's all right with you. You seem cool with it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. If you seem Black Mirror and you like it, then it's this type of shit I think about. Like integrating, like wouldn't it be cool though, like if we turn like me and you like when we get to be 70 or 80 they come out with these fucking bio mechanical arms and eyes and shit that they can just pop our old ones out and put new ones in and we can see like perfectly like we did when we were like 15 16 that would be pretty cool i would have to jump on that bandwagon hell yeah dude yeah. they might Live be able longer. to track me but i can see good though because because mm-hmm. like when you turn my dad was sitting on the couch the other day and he was like he was like, I'm about to turn 60. I'm like, man, you look damn good for 60, <laughs> buddy. And he was like, dude, one day I just woke up and I could, because he was looking at his phone like this. I'm like, dude, can you not see? And he's like, one day I woke up and I just couldn't see as good. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Figure something out for us, man. Or like if we could get like bionic knees and like ligaments where we could jump like 20 feet. Wouldn't that be crazy? I don't know what purpose it would serve, really, <laughs> except for jumping really high, but maybe if you wanted to be a professional athlete. Yeah. Yeah. It'd still be cool, though. Like, yeah. if you didn't know I had it, and I'm like, yo, check this out, and I just jumped like 20 feet in there. You would definitely make WECT or <laughs> some kind of local news. I think they'll eventually come out with some crazy, like, biomechanical shit. Yeah. Well, now you can sit on this, I don't know what it is in the water, but the water spout will spit you up, like. 20 feet in the air it's Have like a board that? right yeah that's really cool um, yeah. i haven't seen too many people on it it's just like through videos on instagram but in 10 years i'm sure a lot more people will have it dude saw one at the north end did you nice. yeah i was at the north end and what it does this one i don't know about another one but what it does is there's this tube that hooks up to a jet ski and there's a guy on a jet ski that's like revving it and when he revs the, or like when he sits there and revs the jet ski, it powers the, uh, I forget what they call those things. Not a, they can't call it a waterboard because that's a torture mechanism. <laughs> um, yeah. fuck, I can't remember what they call it. But when he revved the jet ski, the dude would fly up out of the water, dude, and like have that huge water spout coming out of it. I saw him at Carolina Beach doing it. They had their truck out there and you could pay like, it was like $300 to do it for like an hour. Wow. And you could tell, Almost worth it. you could tell how hard it was though. Yeah. Like, because the guy kept coming out of the water and diving back in. And, like, he's, like, he's trying to get his balance. It would take way more than an hour to figure it out. So, if you don't do water sports, then you should probably get that under your belt first. <laughs> Dude, even if you did, it yeah. would probably be hard as hell. Because it's, like, something totally different than anything I've ever seen before. It's really like, floating, almost. I saw some dudes. I was on the boat. And I saw some dudes that were, like, they had these. I'm not kidding you. This is for real. Like, they had these little 
pretty much same type of board that we're talking about, right? And it had like a like like a scooter with a snowboard on it. Imagine that, like a snowboard with a scooter handle on it, right? Yeah. And they were driving it, and it was going like twenty miles an hour. And there's just one guy standing on a board, like a like a scooter with a water motor on it. Craziest shit that I've ever so seen. Crazy. You yeah, ain't I never seen, seen nothing that. like that. No, no. Me either. I was sitting out there and I was looking at it and I was like, "Holy shit, that's crazy, dude!" Like just the crazy stuff that we keep coming out with. It's nuts, right? Oh yeah. Isn't crazy. Well, well, at least we'll never be bored. There's something yeah. bigger and better out there to yeah. work towards. Hell yeah, for sure. Is there? Did we forget anything? Or is there anything you want to plug in or say that I didn't ask you about? Uh, no, I think that covers everything. Cool. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate you coming on my podcast. It'll for be sure. a good warm up for you whenever Joe Rogan hits you up <laughs> and wants you on his. That's what I thought. I was like, I have to like talk to people, right? Yeah, like, yeah, hell yeah. Do. I appreciate it so much. Like, it helps me. This has helped me look at it from another angle as far as like how important, especially for me, like our marshlands and our wetlands are. Like, mm-hmm. it's that's a big part of my life. Like, I look forward to duck season all year long. And, like, I look forward to when all the little finger mullet come in through the waterway. And, like, that's my bait. Like, I catch them and I catch bigger fish with them. And that's, like, my, like, I don't know. It just does something to my spirit when I, when that type, when that season gets here. And it's, like, the sun, the long days and the sun's going down. And I'm, like, on the water and I can smell the salt water and the air. It's, like, I don't know. I feel like that's, like, the closest I can be to, like, spirituality or whatever. So it's, it's so a happy place, nature. Yeah, it's so nature. important. I'm so glad that you brought that up, like how important it is environmentally for us to kind of work towards implementing other sources of energy. You know what I mean? Like try some other stuff that's not going to harm the environment as much. Right. Use some different things, you know what I mean? So like that's really cool, man. So yeah, Sierra Coombe on Instagram, anybody listening – um, this podcast is brought to you by Walmack Electrical Contractors. Hit them up, 910-231-7679. Um, I'll send you this when we get done. Thanks for being on the podcast. Sweet. Thank you so much. Thank you all for listening.